Hello, Engineers Nova Scotia. I'm very excited to be uh, presenting to you today simply because I love engineers, mostly because my grandfather was one. Right. He graduated from uh, what is now called Dow Engineering, worked in the field for about four or five years until he discovered what is the ninth wonder of the world, which is compounding interest. Right. He, he figured out he got the itch for investing and he found out that his money can work as hard as he does. Right. He decided to move on to a more business lifestyle even when he took a matches of business administration up at Western then he started in the field as a financial advisor. Right. So much like myself, my father got to experience firsthand what it was like to have a financial professional in the house. Right. Every other evening they would have what what he would call open discussions about money, but really there were lectures about how to properly financial plan for the future. Right. And me and my father both became living, breathing proof that a financial plan can actually impact the ones that you love for the better in the future. Right. Beth mentioned that I went to Acadia University and it was great because I got to go to the university that I wanted to go to because my parents had a strong, proper financial plan put in place. So I never had to worry about whether or not I could afford to go to the university. Right. They took advantage of the formula, which is super basic, which is compounding interest, right? The one that my grandfather, he didn't discover it, but he sure as hell loves it, right? The formula is fairly basic, right? I don't think I need to go in depth about uh, anything mathematical. Really, I don't need to lecture you guys about how the, the formula works because it's fairly straightforward, right? You have your, your capital, right? Times your, your rate of return to the power of T. Right, that time, unfortunately, is the only thing that we can't get enough of, right? And that's what we're planning for when it comes to planning for your retirement and your financial well-being, right? Because you can affect the capital, right? You can add more money into that formula, right? You can indirectly affect that rate of return, but that T, you either have it or you don't, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today is a way to plan towards your future if you don't necessarily have as much time right the more time that you have the easier it is to get there right i see we still have more people coming in i'll give them another minute or two before we really jump into the presentation right before we get going there's a few things i have to go over right for not more compliance but really just for a broader message it's that uh, a lot of the ideas we're going to be discussing today are ideas that i hope any financial professional would share with you Right, a lot of the information is you know fairly straightforward, um, but I do I do uh, hope that before you make any material change to your financial plan, you do consult with a professional. Right, and secondly, this is what I do for a living. Right, I love talking about it. And if you have ever any questions that you don't think we're going to be covered today, please reach out. Right, I've placed a link to my website. You can get all the links to my emails and my phone number. Give me a call and we can chat. Right, today we're going to be really diving into financing your retirement. Originally, we've done a presentation maybe about two weeks ago on the seven risk mediating factors, but we made the mistake of assuming that everyone in the audience already had a financial plan, right? The problem is you can't start, you can't start talking about the investments if the plan's not put in place. Today, we're going to talk about how we actually create that plan. And if we have time, we'll dive back into the seven risk mediating factors. Right, today's presentation is really divided up into four sections, but it's really we're going to focus on three. Right, because this presentation, it's a lunch and learn, right? It's for your improvement of your own personal uh, financial knowledge, right? And if we have, so we're going to talk about determining your goals, right? How we actually build towards your retirement and then some tips and tricks to maximizing your savings. We have time after questions. I'll talk about all the great things that IG can do for you, but if we don't, we're really hopefully the bulk of the presentation will be about these goals, right? These themes, they're, they're, they're fairly straightforward, in some cases even self-explanatory. But taking on this kind of challenge alone, especially given the impact it can have on your life, could be a daunting task, right? And I can't stress enough how important it is that you make sure you get the expert help when it comes to coming up with building your retirement income strategy. Now, it's riveting stuff here. The retirement income planning process it's not linear, right? It's an ongoing process and you can jump in at any single point, right? The process is meant to be ongoing and should be reviewed regularly. 
right? Let's start at the top. Calculating your retirement income. Once again, fairly straightforward. How much money are you going to have in retirement? Do you know if you're going to be able to do all the things that you want to do, right? Then you estimate how much everything's going to cost. Fairly straightforward. You determine that there is a gap, right? And what do you do? There is. You calculate that withdrawal rate and determine the income longevity, right? Let's call these steps four and five. They work very closely together because not having a proper strategy put in place, you can quickly deplete your entire retirement savings. Right then, after you've you've done all you've gone all through these five steps, you select the appropriate product and planning alternatives. Right. Then you continually monitor and adjust your plan regularly. Because if this last year was not a perfect example of not necessarily knowing what's around the corner, uh, I don't know what is. Right. And ensuring that your plan is stress tested and able to adapt to the ongoing changing environment of our ever changing world. Uh, you need to be have that prepared and ready for the best and for the worst case. Right, let's talk about determining your retirement goals. Right, for years now, financial advisors have used a general rule of thumb that Canadians will require approximately 70% of their pre-retirement income to maintain their current standard of living. However, today that's not necessarily the case. Right, whether it's higher expectations or simply an increased cost of living, and the fact that Canadians are living longer and experiencing much longer retirements, that figure should be closer to 80. And really, if you plan to travel the world and not just live in your home quietly for the rest of your life, that number can reach higher than 100% of that pre-retirement income, right? You know, every, every plan is unique, right? Let's take a look at what we can do to make sure these figures and these numbers uh, work for you, right? most commonly asked questions from two very distinct groups are the following right and there's a pretty solid line in the sand to divide it up whether you are currently retired or you're approaching retirement right whether you're first year on the job or last year you're either retired or you're not right the most commonly asked question for people approaching retirement is how much money do i need to retire and for those that are retired is and scarier one is am i going to be okay Right. Well, after today, you'll have a better understanding of what those answers might be. And if if, if not, if you don't have the answer after one presentation, uh, you'll certainly will know how to go about finding out. Right. The problem that we discussed on the previous slide is that there's no hard and fast rule that always works. Right. We need to figure out your individual starting points and then work from there to eventually find an answer for these questions. Envisioning your retirement. It's not as easy as simply saying, I'm going to need 70% of what I have today to live out tomorrow, right? There's a lot of things that need to come into play for this puzzle, which is how much income am I going to need for retirement, right? First step, when are you going to retire? Will it be 50, 55, 60, 70, right? It all depends on how much you've prepared ahead of time, right? It also brings up the question of longevity, right? Because once you retire, unfortunately, bills still need to be paid. Right? You also want to live that life of your dreams. Making the decision of whether you're going to be 55 or 70, right? that can be decided, fortunately enough, today, right? if you have the proper plan put in place. Right? Health is also important. Do you know your family history? Right? Is your plan currently set up for you to live to 90, but your family history tells you you won't live past 70? Right? If someone told you that, are you going to change the date to retire? Right, in your marital status, are you still married? Do you have dependents? What's your risk tolerance? What assets do you own? Right, are you going to have that house in retirement, a lakeside cabin, one, two, three cars, four cars, maybe? Right, how much do you have saved up for retirement? What currently assets do you have? Are you going to have debt? Right, because once again, once you stop working, you're still going to have to take care of those liabilities. And unfortunately, most liabilities will follow you through death and affect the people that you love after you're gone. Lifestyle expenses, right? This one is crucial, right? Do you plan on simply sitting at home for those 30, 40 years in retirement? Or do you want to travel the world? Do you want to live the life and take advantage of all that time that you didn't have when you were working, right? Because most people, when you're retiring, it's because you've, you've made the decision, I don't no longer want to trade my human capital for money. I want to relax, and have some time to myself and my family. Right, as you can see, before even beginning to calculate 
your savings, you got to think about how much money you'll need, right? And there's many personal questions you need to have, right? I mean, there's not going to be a test after this, but if you're going to take anything away, take a look in the mirror and try to figure out what your retirement can look like. Then you see, once you've completed that little look in the mirror and you've, you've done all your dreaming, try to figure out if there's a gap, right? That gap is really just the difference between dream and reality, right? And spoiler alert, the answer to reaching it are financial strategies, right? But fortunately, many Canadians do see a significant financial gap between their dreams and reality. And here are the top five reasons. Uh, number one is no money left over to save. Right, pretty straightforward. A lot of people are living above their means today, and that's solely going to catch up to them in the future. Number two, and this is going back to that great compounding interest, is that they started saving too late. Right, they couldn't take advantage of the formula because that T was too small. Right. Number three is they're still supporting kids. Number four, there's health issues, and number five, job issues. I don't know if I forgot to mention it up top. Any questions that you have today, please put them in the chat. All right. At the end of each section, we'll review them. And if the question isn't going to be answered in the next part of the presentation, I'll address them right away. Uh, otherwise, we'll wait to the end and we'll have a, an extended question period. Back to the presentation. So how do you close that gap? Right. You'll work with a professional that identify an alternative strategy to apply to your situation. Right. It's never too early or too late to figure out what you want in retirement. It's not too early. And sometimes it actually is too late to see if you can actually make them a reality. Now, Canadians are enjoying longer retirements, right? These statistics aren't supposed to scare. They're supposed to be great, but they can be scary if not properly addressed, right? This chart shows the average lifespan of a 60-year-old today, right? It's important to note that half the individuals and couples will live beyond these ages, right? 50% of all males that are 60 today will live past the age 83, right? Females, 86, and at least one member of every couple to 90, right? Living longer is great. It's fantastic. The medical technology that we have, Canadians are living longer. The unfortunate thing is that costs more money, right? And a financial plan can help with that. We're going to talk about things that can erode it and something one of the top three killers of anyone's financial nest egg or medical expenses, right? We live in Canada, we have a great healthcare system, but unfortunately, sometimes the waits can be long. And if what you need done is urgent, right, you might have to go private. Additionally, not everything is covered, right? Physiotherapy and other forms of therapy aren't necessarily covered by the healthcare system and paying for those where you want to be able to actually live the life that you've always wanted uh, will slowly but surely eat away at that retirement nest egg. Now I'm going to go check the conversation section. Anyone have any idea what the number one killer of your retirement income is? Any guesses? And spoiler alert, it is not what's happening down in the states and the markets. Tough crowd, nothing in the chat. Well, for all of you that guessed inflation, you were correct. Even low inflation can damage your purchasing power, right? I don't know how in depth I need to go with the idea of inflation, but simply is that goods tomorrow are going to be more expensive than today, right? It's fairly rare that Canada's experienced a long extended period of deflation, right? And even a small inflation of 2%, you can see how it can really eat away at your purchasing power. Yes, your million dollars is still a million dollars, but in 25 years, that million dollars can only buy $615,000 worth of goods today, right? And this is just the best case scenario, 2%, right? What happens if it reaches three to four, you can slowly see how your purchasing power, that million dollars is necessarily worth as much as it was, right? Understanding your risk tolerance is crucial. And I need to emphasize this concept. I often see retirees decide to avoid all forms of risk, right? Simply to throw all their retirement savings into fixed income assets. The problem is that being overly cautious financially is almost as bad as, as being reckless, right? Because you think you're you're protecting yourself from investment losses, but you're actually losing ground to inflation, right? As we saw in the previous slides, right? Certain investments often thought to be safe, like a GIC, right? The chances are, yes, that, that money, that, that, that number in your account is going up, 
but in reality, its overall value hasn't really increased, right? This is why I can't emphasize enough the importance of a properly diversified portfolio. Right? And, and really, it's all depending on your individual situation, but the majority of people, I believe, strongly want to at least beat inflation, right? So their money isn't simply losing its value over and over and over. This is why maybe a balanced portfolio, which traditionally looks to be more risky than just fixed income, there's an argument to be made that is far, far less. Another key thing to keep in mind is that you should be investing for the long term, right? When you take advantage of the time that you have before your retirement, right, before that goal, whatever, whether it is retirement or simply that major purchase, is that if you're investing for the long term, it shouldn't matter what happens in the short term, right? You hear in the news all these market crashes. We actually just experienced one of the quickest recoveries in history. And really, if we were going year by year, the year 2020 wouldn't necessarily be on the list of worst financial years because overall it had a return of 7%. Right. Following a crash, historically speaking, except for one year, the markets were up significantly. Right, exceeding long term expectations. Many of the strongest returns in the markets occurred in periods immediately following a sharp decline in equity markets. Right, the moral of the story is don't let your emotions take over, stick to a plan. Right, without a plan, it's way too easy to take your money out at the bottom without realizing that you're actually there. Right? Now, also, investing for the long term doesn't preclude having a short and medium term strategy. Right, the value of working with an investment professional is that you can have different accounts, you can have different strategies set up. For your short and long term goals. Another killer of your retirement savings beside inflation is not properly planning for the correct withdrawal rate. Right? The withdrawal rate can make a big impact on your retirement. Right? Just look at the difference between a withdrawal rate of six and five percent. Right? Six percent, your money right there, anything higher than it, that's you outliving your money. Right, 6%, there could be an argument that if you've lived 42 years in retirement, that's great, but you didn't have to think about your money. But the truth is, if you'd only gone down to maybe a 5.5, five, you would have maintained the amount of money you had in your retirement account, and chances are you actually would have gained, right? This composition of a portfolio is the exact same one all the way through. It's a typical balance fund where 30% of the assets are in the TSX, and 15 are in the S&P 500. The rest are split between different bonds right? and it doesn't really matter what the portfolio is all that matters is that your different withdrawal rate can directly impact the life of your portfolio and really impact your life in retirement now before we talk about creating your retirement are there any questions on the first few slides that we went over That's very specific. I'll, I'll actually, I'll touch some more on, on that near at the end, right? Hopefully we will answer that in the next few slides. All right, we'll talk about creating your retirement income, right? Considering the income sources to plan efficiently. Now, this is where most of the income is coming for most Canadians. Now, trust me, there's, there's many more than you think. And once you've gone through them all, you, you quickly realize that it's imperative to help make sure you, they all work together and intertwine. Because otherwise, you'll likely be stuck paying more taxes than necessary. Right. So there's two different types. You got your guaranteed and your asset based. First, on the guarantee side, you have CPP. Right. I don't know how in depth I'll need to go with the Canadian Pension Plan. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Right. Because the moment you've received your first paycheck, a portion was automatically deducted and pooled into a pension fund that every working Canadian gets access to when they eventually apply for it. Right. The quick things you need to know is that it provides monthly income, right? You're entitled and is based on your past contribution to the length of your contribution period. Uh, something that not a lot of people know, though, is that you actually have to apply to it and also all the benefits are taxable. Then we have OAS, right? Old age security, right? Something that you don't directly pay into, but you kind of do because it comes directly from the government of Canada's tax revenue, right? Old age tends to kick in around age 65. The thing is, it is income tested. So beware of clawback, right? Without a proper plan, 
there's a chance you won't be getting the full benefit from the old age security. Then we have your employer sponsored programs and we come to our last guaranteed income, which is your defined benefit plan, right? Uh, I wonder if I, were, if I were to poll everyone in the audience, how many people actually know what their entitlement is going to be when the day they retire, right? The people with the guaranteed income, they probably have a better idea versus the people with defined contribution plans. And this isn't a shot at the employers. It's just that as an employee, you should take the time to read what your benefits are going to be right? and figure out if those benefits are going to cover what you're required or what you want to spend when it comes to retirement. I don't know how much I need to, to touch on TV plans, right? Uh, there's usually a combination of the length of service, right? Your average salary. And additionally, there's also a plan formula that brings it all together. And then for defined contribution, well, that's asset based income, right? There's the amount that you put in every month. And based on how it's properly managed, the amount of people that are taking money out, also another pension formula is put into place, you'll see how much money you get back, right? Then you have group RESPs, right? Where you and your employer regularly contribute. Right? But please be aware and be careful that your RSP cannot exceed your annual maximum contribution limit. We'll talk more about RSPs on the next next page. Then we have deferred profit sharing plans. Right? These ones aren't as common, but you're, they're funded solely by your employer, right? And you don't have the same rules as registered pension plans because your size of your retirement benefit depends solely on the amount of contribution made by your employer and how the investments perform, right? It's important to note that that all these contributions create pension adjustments that will reduce your RSP contribution room. All right, let's talk about the most popular savings vehicle in Canada, which is the registered savings plan, right? Some of the benefits right off the bat is that it offers immediate tax relief by lowering your taxable income in the year you made the contribution, right? This also, there's also ways to lower your tax back from your lower how much tax your employer withholds from your paycheck, right? Insuring, which is essentially providing the government with interest-free loans. So make sure that you're getting the amount of money that you're owed. Because if you're going to take advantage of the RESP, you might actually be getting a refund at the end of the day. Right? The RESP, its design, its objective is, is long-term investing, right? The very nature of the type of investment vehicle that it is, there's a great incentive to not to not dip in to your savings, right? It's encouraged for individuals to stay invested over the long run and reap the full benefit of market activity, right? The greatest thing about the RSP is that you can grow your wealth exponentially through tax deferred compound growth, right? And yes, there's ways to get access to the money before retirement, right? You can take advantage of first time home buyers. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but really, this account it's incentivized since you are taxed fully at the end right since you are getting that, that kickback of tax at the start is to let that money in there and let it grow throughout retirement All right so what's this mean right to break it down in the most simplest terms you pay less tax you save more for retirement and you slowly get closer to achieving peace of mind right. other things you should know little quick tips there's contribution deadlines and limits right Generally, your RSP contribution limit is, is 18% of your previous year's earnings to a specific maximum dollar value, and that changes every single year, right? Your unused contribution room can carry over, right? So if you expect to pay a massive tax bill uh, and you haven't actually contributed to your RSP, consider putting some money away in there, right? So that money, then, instead of paying it all directly to the government, you actually get some benefit from it. So you let that grow. Now let's talk about my, my favorite account which is the tax-free savings account. The TFSA is one of the greatest things that the government of Canada has ever created. Simply put, you can put in $6,000 every single year after the years that you turn 18, and that money can grow tax-free. Right here are the numbers for 2019. That number today is, is $75,500. You're able to put that much money in today. That money can grow to a million dollars. You can take it out, not have to pay a cent on tax. It's incredible, right? Contributions, yes, they're not tax deductible, they're, but they're not taxed at the end, right? The tax free savings account, it, it's perfect, right? It's, it's, it's a great supplement to any planning strategy that you have, right? For the majority of people, sometimes it's better than the RSP for individuals with a higher effective marginal tax rate in retirement. 
right? Because when in those first few years, when you're usually at the peak of tax paying, having a tax free option for money is very, very you know, beneficial, right? It's also great for the major purchase goals, right? When I asked Beth for some subjects that you guys would be interested in learning about, I got bombarded with about, not bombarded, but there was a line that had basically 10, right? And I could do a presentation on each individual one, but major purchase came up, right? A perfect example of great use of a tax-free savings account is you you finish your summer vacation and you think to yourself, I kind of want to, I kind of want to upgrade the deck next year, right? Thing is, you have the money today. You just learned about how much damage inflation can make on that act money's actual buying power. Additionally, with the way that lumber prices are fluctuating, you don't want to get caught in that spit, that place where you actually want to make an upgrade and you can't afford it. You take the money today, you throw it in your tax free. This is where we start looking more at guaranteed income solutions, right? Because at least we want to keep up with inflation. A year comes down the line, you can take it out. And there you go. Your money has actually grown in value, right? Instead of just sitting around in your savings account. Additionally, you weren't taxed on that value, right? Because when you have a high interest savings account at the bank, that 0.001% interest that you gain on, you are taxed. You are taxed on it, right? Your money was able to grow tax free or at the worst, just sit tax free. Right, and then you're able to. To build that deck, right? It's also great for an emergency fund because it is one of the most liquid accounts because you don't have to worry about the tax. Right this past year, I think a lot of people. Dipped into their emergency fund, whether it was to, you know, they were spending a lot of time at home, upgrade their homes or really in the worst case scenario it was to live because they were they were unemployed. Right, so ensuring that you, you use the tax free savings account. And there's no reason why you shouldn't have one. Right, use it as a savings account. It's liquid. You can go in and out of it as fast as you want. Uh, just make sure you don't go over those contribution limits. And you'll be good to go. Now we have uh, our non registered assets, right? And this is an option once you've maximized your contributions to the RSP and the tax free savings account. It's a tax efficient investing strategy, right? You can use it, right? Only if you use tax preferred income, right? If possible, structure your non-registered portfolio to hold equities to ensure that the tax preferred income like capital gains and dividends are in there, right? Because fixed income investments should be held in your RSP and the tax free savings account. Non-registered funds can be used strategically, such as tax efficient supplementary retirement income. They can also be great for your emergency fund. And these are the funds that you can use for your charitable donations. I mean, you can use any of your three major vehicles for charitable donations. The only thing is you'll maximize that tax credit that you get back uh, if it's coming out, if it's coming out, may not registered account. So you may be asking yourself, you know, how do I get my money, right? Prior to retirement, you have one single paycheck every two weeks. How do I put it all together, right? Because taking your money from the wrong spot at the wrong time you're probably going to end up paying more tax than you have to. You got to put it all together, right? You got to combine all your streams of income. And really, this is when this is where a professional really makes his mark. It's when they build you your retirement paycheck, right? That plan is so important for you to know where the money's coming from and when, right? Because because without it, there is a chance that maybe you took too much from your non-reg at the peak, or you took too much from your RIF at the peak of your your taxable earnings, and then you're end up paying a hell of a lot more tax than you have to. We're flying through this. Now we're at, at tips for maximizing your retirement income. Just give another quick check. People have temporarily joined the chat. All right, check back at the end. All right, let's talk about tips to maximizing your retirement income. Right. These are some tips and tricks that um, I hope every financial advisor share with you. When it comes to maximizing your plan, once you get closer and closer to retirement. All right, this one's really straightforward, right? Contribute early. Right, many Canadians wait until the RSP deadline each year to make their annual contribution, and they may be leaving a possible increase in investment returns on the table. Right, you know, it's pretty straightforward. This is based off 20 years with earnings if you just simply thrown into a balance fund, right? A conservative return of 4.75% over the past 20 years. The difference in growth comes from when they actually made the contribution. 
right? The first group here contributed $10,000 every year on the March 1st deadline right? after the end of the taxation year, year for 20 years, right? They waited right to the last moment, right? The second group here decided to split up their $10,000 in the monthly installments of $833, right? Off the bat, a difference of nearly $13,000 in growth over those 20 years. And then this first group, every year, every year when January 1st rolled around, they put their 10, 10K in. Right, and you can see there's a difference of nearly there's a difference of nineteen thousand dollars from that first group simply because they they had two more months. Like January, February. Yeah, they had two more months of growth. Right. Two more months of growth. Right. And I can break down the math, but I, I think it's fairly straightforward. Right. Now if you can't contribute early, contribute regularly. Right. Managing volatility through dollar cost averaging is is one of the best ways to fully experience that compounding growth factor and consistently putting money away. Right, the idea is when the markets are high, you're buying into what you believe in. When the markets are low, you're getting them cheap. Nevertheless, you're continuously putting money in. Right, over time, the value of your investment is gonna be greater because you're taking full advantage of that time in the market, which means you're taking more advantage of that T in the compound growth formula, regardless of when you're buying the capital or when you're buying the investments, you're at the important thing is that you're putting the money in. Right. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Also makes a lot of sense and reinforces the idea that your plan should be regularly reviewed. As your earnings increase, plan to save more, right? As your lifestyle changes, make precaution make sure that your lifestyle after you retire will be able to increase as well right if you're contributing 250 dollars per month when you're making 50k increase that to 500 when you're making 100k right pretty self-explanatory consider income splitting prior to age 65 right and here's something that not a lot of people tend to think about right is that many people question the need uh, for spousal RSPs, right? They some people actually get spooked. They say, "I don't want, I don't want to save with my spouse. This is my money that I've earned." We'll show you why on the next page that income splitting can make a huge difference in that tax bill, right? Now we believe here at IG that you know a dollar saved is just as good as a dollar earned, right? If we can get you five percent on your investments, but you save ten percent on your tax bill, right? You know, some people might see it as an equal, but that's a that's a 50% overall gain to your net worth. Right. Here's a, an example, right? These are Ontario figures, but we all we saw live in a progressive income tax system where the tax increases the higher income levels. In this example, you'll see that. Well, first option, one spouse. The couple needs sixty thousand dollars for the year, right? First option is the spouse. First spouse takes out fifty k at an average tax rate of twenty thousand, right? And this this example holds even truer for Nova Scotia, since we have one of the least favorable tax rates in the country, right? You can see that at nearly twenty percent, the retirement income is forty eight thousand thirty. Now, if they were to Split income, right? Take advantage of a of a spousal RESP, right? You can see that instead of simply taking it all out and experiencing a higher rate, you could take forty, and then your spouse could take twenty out of the spousal RESP, seeing an increase of nearly four thousand dollars. Right, four thousand dollars is like a solid chunk of change, and if you're doing that consistently. Throughout your retirement, you can see fairly quickly how the tax savings could pile up. Tip number six, diversify your portfolio. Right, we talked about it earlier, talked about the importance that, you know, in the past when people thought we're, we're playing it safe, really you're actually hurting yourself in the long run because playing it safe can outrun inflation, right? Sometimes the the plan the price of playing it safe erodes your money over time thanks to inflation, right? Now, I'm not saying buy a GIC and then go gamble with Bitcoin, right? Yes, technically you're diversified, but that's that's not what we're talking about, right? Finding 
finding the investments that, that match your risk tolerance are incredibly important, right? But the most important thing that you need to beat consistently isn't the market, right? At the very least, you need to beat inflation. Right, and this is another slide to really consider the effects of inflation, and, and it's really the exact, pretty much a different version of the slide we talked about before. Right, thousand dollars today will be worth eight twenty in ten years of inflation is two percent. Right, and now if in thirty years of inflation is four percent, it'll be worth three hundred eight dollars. Right, let's hope that we don't ever experience inflation of that rate. But this is just to really emphasize the importance of of making your money work for you. Number eight is resist dipping into your savings. Right, you see fairly quickly here the impact that, you know, even just a withdrawal of ten thousand dollars can have on your long term long term value. Right now, this is all assuming a, a balanced fund with a rate of return of four point seven five percent. Right, but if dipping into your savings, or if, if you need the money, you need the money. Right, but resist not doing it. Right, because you can see over time how much value you're missing out on. Invest with tax efficiency, right? Tax efficiency, it's something that a lot of people don't really think about, right? So often you'll see people who have the exact same investments in all three of their accounts, right? They'll have the exact same lineup in their RSP, their tax savings account and their non-registered account, right? One, usually it's because their advisor is lazy. Uh, and also, this is not to discredit, if you do, if they're all um, tax prudent investments, then that's great, right? But if, if fixed income is part of your strategy, right? Put it in the RSP, right? Make sure that it's there. If you have capital gain assets, make sure they're in your non-registered account or your tax free. Right, just making sure that your your asset splits are put in the correct place can make a real difference in your tax bill at the end of the year. Now, now we we're getting close to the end here, so we have some final advice is to let us help. Right, this presentation in no way covered everything you need to know about financial planning. Right, and I look forward to having additional conversations with you about your specific needs and interests. Right, what we do at IG, it's so much more than simply picking your investments. And if that's what you're going for to, to people, or that's what you're paying your current advisor is simply just a stock picker, you're probably overpaying them, right? Because there's free there's free material out there that you can go read for yourself, right? Where, where financial planners and advice come into play is when your specific situation is a little bit more complicated than simply saying, I want to be rich overnight. Right? Are there any questions? I'll go into the chat here. On the screen, you'll you'll see that QR code. You can give her a scan with your phone. It'll, it'll take you directly to my website or our company's website where you'll have access to all my contact information. All right, as I give me a second to get back here. I always, it's not technically in the slides, but I always like to tell a story about a question that I received from one of these presentations a, a few months ago. I can come back here and try to process these. They asked me, uh, why I didn't pitch any investments, right? They said, Justin, you work for IG Wealth, formerly known as Investors Group. Why didn't we talk about investments? And I took a second to pause because I wondered if he even listened to the presentation. And I told him because it, it wasn't crucially important for you today, right? What we do is we build the financial plan first. The investment is is incredibly important, but it's not the main reason. Right? It's not the number one thing of your financial plan, right? I used analogy, right? And they were they're part of an industry that dealt with cars. And I wonder if it'll hold true with a group of engineers. And I hope I don't put my foot in my mouth talking to people who definitely know a hell of a lot more about cars than I do. Is uh right, if you're building a car, your car is your financial plan, right? If you're building a car, the engine are the investments, right? The investments are what propel you to your final destination. Right now, the body of your car, right? The, the, the body, that's the vehicle, right? Whether it's a, a tax-free savings account or an RSP, the body is important, right? And make sure that you have the, the right one. There's a, there's a reason why you don't drive your Ford F-150 in the mean streets of Paris, and you don't take a Vespa off-roading here in, in Nova Scotia, right? Because there's a proper vehicle for the proper situation. 
And finally, the fuel for your car, you know, that's you, that's your discipline. That's you putting the money away, right? Without the fuel, the engine can't go. And regardless of what the vehicle is, it's not going to move. And that's where most people are at, right? That's where 50%, uh, 50 to 70% of the population is at. They have a car. Unfortunately, they're driving blind. They don't have a plan. Right, because without the plan in place, you don't necessarily know if you're driving to the right destination or if you're putting in enough fuel to get to your destination, right? Whether you're putting enough money in into that gasoline, which will propel that engine, which are the investments, right? Or whether or not you'll need to upgrade the engine to something maybe a little bit more reliable and more consistent, right? Without the plan, without the GPS, which is the financial plan, it doesn't matter what the investments are. Right, because you could be burning fuel without realizing you're going to get to your goal. Now, if you're simply investing just to increase your overall net worth and you don't care how much tax you're going to pay in the future, then yeah, we can just talk about investments. Right. And sorry, I'm rambling on. What was what was I talking about? I was talking about right, right, why I didn't pitch an investment. It's the same reason why we didn't go super deep into the seven risk mitigating factors, is because if there isn't a plan set in place, uh, you'd find yourself. Um, well, just treading water. Okay, we'll go to the chat here for some of the questions. All right, uh, Jonah, right? Jonah's asking if you get a large sum of money once a year, like a bonus, is there any point to spending this over time for dollar cost averaging? or just investing as soon as you have it, right? Well, Jonah, we can go back to the slide where we talked about taking advantage of that time, right? This is where we're talking with a financial professional is important. The short answer is the sooner you get the money in the market, the better, right? Because historically, historically, we see that time in the market grossly overperforms time in the market, right? But really, it's all about also comes back to your affordability, right? If you can afford to put all the money in at once, go for it, right? Then it's a, it's a different discussion about whether or not what's going to be better for returns, right? But it's more about your affordability, right? But yeah, that large sum of money, if you have it, throw it in as soon as possible. Now, that's not to say uh, your advisor won't, won't sit down with you and will take an, an outlook on the market. Right, because if the if the specific markets that you're typically invested in, we might put them somewhere else if those are way overvalued. Right. Anyway, long answer is it's long and long of the short of it. Short of the long of it is that yes, most of the time it's more advantageous to put it in all at once. Right, depending on the assets you're investing in. So it, 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 the answer is it depends, but typically if if you can afford to do it, put it all in at once. If not. And you want to be more consistent, something you can be more disciplined with, do dollar cost averaging. Did that answer your question? Yes, no, maybe. Thanks. Great. All righty. Now I'll go into. Okay, now we're looking for additional funds between mortgage debt, TFSA, and RESP. All right, we have a question here from N42 at Defense 365. Um, sorry if I, if I, I don't know if I can pronounce the name correctly. But right, it goes based on return. How would you allocate additional funds between mortgage, debt, TFSA, and your RSP? Right, and, and and again, that depends on your individual scenario. Right, if you have mountains of debt that you're not sure you're going to be able to pay off, you pay that down as soon as possible. Right, but it all depends on the current day. Right, so if you if you currently have one of those great mortgages that you were able to get over the pandemic when the rates are super low and the markets are expecting to get a higher rate of return, right? There's strategy that can be put in place where if you're expecting to get a 7% return in your, in your investment account and that mortgage, it's only going to be a 2% that you owe, right? You can jingle it around where you can put that money in your tax free, get that return and then pay down more of the mortgage, but, but it all depends on your risk tolerance. And, and that's a question that you should consult with your with your financial professional. And if you want to sit down with me and my team, we have people specifically in house, right? That talk that can talk to these specific things. Actually, I just realized I never actually introduced you, showed you what our teams look like here at IG. When you come with IG, um, if it hasn't been clear yet, 
uh, you don't just get me, right? Because any any time an advisor sits across from you and tells you they have all the answers or they can do it all themselves, they're 100% lying, right? They're gonna throw you one two things. They're gonna lie to your face or two. They're gonna disappoint you, right? When you come with IG, you get access to our entire team. This is how they typically look at, right? You get the very handsome financial consultant in the corner, but you also get access to the local specialist team. Right, so we have the mortgage planning and the tax, and we also have wealth planning specialists, right? So for your specific scenario, we have a couple of them sit in with us and we take a look at how much money do you owe on your, on your mortgage, right? How much can you allocate to the tax free in your RSP? And we, we figure out a plan for you that will answer these questions. So I, I'm sorry, uh, flight CDR, I wish there was a name at the top of your, your question. And it looks like you might have actually logged out. Um, that answer that answer is a little bit more complicated than a quick quick shot here. Alan, that's a great question. Yes, yes, I would talk to. Uh, I would consider utilizing the first time home buyers right now for 90% of Canadians, it makes sense, right? And we talked about earlier how when you're indirectly when you're taking money out of your account, Right, you can see the impacts of what it is in the long term, but you're you're financing your home, which is the majority of people the largest investment they ever make. Right? Are you looking for? Would you consider utilizing RSP uh, first time home buyers? Well, really, okay, yeah, Alan, we do you do a mix of both. Right? Yeah, but the first time home buyers, it's 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 great. Right? You can take up to thirty five thousand dollars from your RSP savings, seventy thousand if if you're a couple. Right? To help finance the down payment on your home. Right? The only killer is every time you, you take that money out, you're indirectly impacting your retirement, right? Because that money's not growing and taking advantage of, of that uh, a great thing with that deferred tax growth. But yes, yeah. So there, for your specific situation, it's worthwhile looking into that that first time home buyers because you take it out. You can for everyone who doesn't know the first time home buyers, you can you can take up to thirty five thousand dollars individually out of your RESP RSP sorry tax free and put a down payment on your home. You have 15 years to pay that back. There's a certain that number is set based on how much money you took out. But yeah, using a combination of that and also utilizing the tax free savings account, that tax free savings account is going to save you a lot of headaches down the line, right? Because that's an account where you can throw the money in and out of. Um, so I'd recommend a, you know, a, a combination of both. And if you once again, sitting down with a financial professional to that have that mapped out for you can really make a difference for the future. Alan, did I answer your question? Yes, no, maybe. There we go. Yeah. Michael has a question about, about fees, right? And that all depends on the advisor. Now, what we do at IG, and I can't speak to people who do fee based based off time, right? Uh, we do it, we do it based off percentage of assets, right? And when it makes sense is really uh, you know when you can't do it yourself right and 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 that's not a challenge to anyone right because what tends to happen is the time right that utility that you get out of speaking with an advisor um you know you're not just getting him you're getting their entire team right when does it make sense to use a fee-based planner advisor who charges time versus someone who charges fees versus assets my question is for you is is Typically that that if there are advisors that are that pay based off the time that it takes, they're probably going to charge you more, right? The the financial planning process, it's ongoing, right? So if you're paying them based off time, I, I honestly I've I've never seen that, so I'm a little confused at uh, to how that would work. Um, I recommend make sure you do it based off assets, right? The financial environment of financial planning has evolved right back in the day. You could charge someone for every trade that you made in their account, right? And that's where a lot of. Well, financial advisors, people who call themselves financial advisors were exposed because they would just make trades on trades on trades. Uh, what worries me about an advisor that charges you uh, based off time is that really it's it's hard to prove. It's hard to prove uh, what they're doing is actually helping you, right? Uh, we have a, we have a saying in the office, right? If you want an expensive accountant, uh, go to a cheap accountant, right? Because it will take more time to actually getting you to your goal. Uh, yeah, sorry, Michael. That's that's one's more an opinion based from my end. I, I believe that having a set fee set in place at the start. Um, you know, if an advisor's fee is is one one percent, 
right? And they get you a return of 8%. Do you care that, that the fee was 1%? And that's something where I'm at. Sorry, Michael, if I, I couldn't give you a, a straight answer for that. I didn't realize there's still planners out there doing time-based fee. Ian, all right, there we go. Yeah, sorry, Ian, I, I, your name didn't come up when it did um, uh, go there. Michael, thanks. Well, any, any last questions for me today? Right, I don't want to take up more of your time. Time's incredibly important. Right, we still have about six minutes. I can show you briefly. Um, you know, I'll give you a quick pitch on why IG Wealth Management is where you should spend your time. Right, we've been inspiring uh, Canadians for over 90 years. Right, oh, one second, check one more time. This last question. There you go. Right, we're all across Canada. A lot of people don't know about our sheer size, and the reason why I talked about how big we are is we're uniquely positioned in the Canadian marketplace within our within house to find a solution that can help every single one of our clients, right? Our sheer size also helps us when it comes to partnering with the highest quality of global asset managers, right? Us like everyone else is that we can we can literally work with anyone, right? We figured out fairly quickly and we we took some some looking in the mirror to figure out that there are people better in the world at individually managing your money, right? So we charge it all out of, out of house, right? Some of these companies you might you might recognize. There's there's BlackRock, and then there's J.P. Morgan, which J.P. Morgan wouldn't even give you a sniff if you had unless you had five to ten million dollars to the door. You can have access uh, to their investment portfolios when you come with IG, right? We've also established Canadian insurance and banking partners all across Canada, which means as part of your financial plan, yes, wealth protection is strongly encouraged through insurance. It means that we can find the plan that works for you, not the plan that works for us, right? Because our, our entire goal is, is bettering your financial well-being, right? Talked about the team. And finally, here's our, our commitment to you, right? Our focus is on you. Or we're so focused to help you achieve your goals through all of life's ups and downs, right? We provide confidence, right? We make sure that every single one of our clients can answer that question. Will my money outlive me or will I outlive my money, right? We want it to be that first option. Right, we provide confidence and success with your goals. Right, we provide you clear guidance to help you gain greater visibility and control over your entire financial life. Right, we keep you informed or transparent with our fees and provide you with ongoing updates to help you track your progress. And we're committed to delivering service excellence. Um, if there are no more questions for today, I, I really want to thank you for coming out. If you're going to take anything out of this presentation today, is that you should take take a moment it doesn't have to be right now. Take it a moment tonight to look in the mirror and figure out if you are, you know, financially ready. Have you achieved financial well-being? Right. There's typically three scenarios that come from these presentations. It's that, um, you know, people either either took them 30 minutes out of their day to uh, sit down and watch a, a babbling advisor, and it took that 30, 30, 45 minutes for them to realize that they're they're good. They've achieved peace of mind. They they understand uh, what their future is going to look like. They know how much income they're going to have, how much they're going to need, and they've did it. They beat the system. They've achieved financial well-being and peace of mind, right? Number two, and this is the most common one, is that most people have a plan, right? Or they think they have a plan. They have an idea of what they'll need for their future, and they they learned a couple tips and tricks today on on how to improve towards their goals. And finally, uh, and this is Right, if the first first truth was worst case, middle was base case, and best case is that it, it was a bit of a wake-up call today that it's time to start looking in the mirror and figuring out, you know, what my retirement's going to look like. How am I going to fund it? And the first steps to achieving that is really to talk with a professional. Beth, I, I think that's it for me today. Um, I'll, I'll throw up I'll throw up my screen one more time in the question area. There's a QR code if you want to scan it. It can bring you directly to my website. Additionally, I threw at the top of the chat a link there, right? Any questions that you have, please reach out, right? Your specific financial needs are, are different from everyone else in the group. And if you didn't want to share them with everyone, uh, I'd be more than I'd more than love to uh, to listen to them, right? Worst case scenario, it's another 30 minutes out of your life that you get to talk with me, right? I want to thank you all again for, for joining us. I don't know if Beth's going to hop back on. If not, uh, have a great, great rest of your day. Um, thank you for having me.
and hopefully if, if you enjoyed this, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll give another presentation on maybe first time home buyers or something more specific.